Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel and thank you so much for watching this video. If you are watching this video, please make sure that you watch the previous two parts of SOC 1 and SOC 2 because uh, SOC 2 compliance is a very vast topic. So this is the third part. So please make sure you watch the part 1 and part 2 before proceeding to here. So in part 1, we discussed about these basic definitions and in part 2, we discussed about in detail what is trust services criteria. In part three, now we will discuss about what are the different aspects of each of the test services principles and test services criteria and what exactly is SOC 2 and what exactly is SOC 2 type 1 report and more about SOC 2 type 2 report. So in details, in depth in this video, please watch carefully and as always, please comment if you have any more questions. Thank you. So when we talk about the trust services principles, trust services criteria, security, availability, confidentiality, privacy, processing, integrity, all of these have relevant controls, relevant controls that the service organization who is providing the service should have in place. Okay. For example, if you want to implement the privacy trust services criteria, then you need to have at least access control two-factor authentication and encryption in place. If you want to implement security, which already I discussed in the previous videos is a default and has to be considered in all the impl implementations. So for security, you need to have minimum network and application firewalls, two-factor authentication and intrusion detection. So these are minimum controls that are being highlighted here. For availability, you need to have disaster recovery in place you need to have proper security incident handling. You need to have performance monitoring in place. That's why SOC 2 certification in itself actually comprises of inclusive of all the controls which are highlighted here. So if you actually want to attain a SOC 2 certification, friends, this is what you need to comply with. Okay. You need to have all these controls in place. You need to make sure they are working properly for the SOC 2 certification. Okay. I hope it is very much clear now. If you are watching from the part one till part three, this video will make a lot of sense to you. And I am absolutely sure that you will be able to understand SOC 2 in complete depth now. And now coming to confidentiality. For confidentiality implementation, you need to have encryption. You need to have access control. You need to have network and application firewalls for confidentiality. And for processing integrity, you need to have monitoring in place if there is no monitoring of course there is no integrity along with that you need to have quality assurance making that all the products are being made as per the quality compliance in place in your organization so this is talking about all the uh, things that come under all the trust services principles these are bare minimum things that i have included here you can have more in your organization depending upon your business cases and this is just a starting point, friends. Do not think that this is the only thing. This is a starting reference for you. Okay. Now, what is SOC 2? Okay. Let us now go deep dive. From part 3 now, we will go deep dive into each and everything. Okay. Because now we have covered the basics. We are now able to understand what is AICPA, what is trust services principle, what is trust services criteria, what is basic about SOC 2. Now, we will go in depth. Okay. So SOC 2, as already been discussed, has been developed by the American Institute of CPAs, AICPA, and is used to define criteria for managing and handling customer data based on the five trust services principles, which we are already looking at, and make sure that about how your organization service provider maintains data through these internal reports. So this is for the service providers who are providing service to your organization. Keep that in mind. This is not for your organization. If you are not providing any services to any other organization, then it is not for you. Okay. It is for those organizations who are providing IT services to you. Okay. Make sure you understand this. Now, uh, considering that, what are the different two types of reports? Two types of SOC 2 reports are SOC 2 type 1 and SOC 2 type 2. 
so what is type 1 and what is type 2 so type 1 report is obtained faster than a type 2 report because type 2 report is more detailed and trusted by potential partners and vendors and companies your potential partners actually will generally prefer and sometimes even demand a soc 2 type 2 report okay now you see the difference between both type of report and why one is more preferred over the other now we will go in depth soc 2 type 1 report soc 2 type 1 report is an authenticated report that validates a company's security controls and rules at a specific date and time okay so type 1 report will actually take back you to a specific date and time and will make sure that on that particular date and that particular time when the auditors have checked it at that particular time the security controls were in place the security rules were intact they will authenticate and they will validate that okay type 1 report is used to define the controls a company follows but does not evaluate or describe the effectiveness of those controls okay effectiveness word is very important especially if you are in auditing field uh, if you are an auditor and if you are watching this video i completely understand and i hope that you relate to this term effectiveness of those controls is very important okay that's why you have soc 2 type 2 report now when you talk about soc 2 type 2 report here you validate that all the controls are operating effectively here the effectiveness comes into place so here you have to make sure that you understand soc 2 type 2 report why because this is now being taken at an interval of let's say about 3 to 12 months okay so it makes sure that controls are established and are working over the time okay and this says that the organization let's say for example from september 30 to march 30 has been following these controls and everything was in place so here you get dates in place here you get actually the term in place for effectiveness for making sure that yes the controls were in place from this day to this date okay so it will look stronger and more trustworthy of course because here this report will make more sense to you okay uh, if you are going for a uh, let's say if you are a service organize uh, organization and you are providing services and some uh, new client comes to your and asks for a soc 2 report of course soc 2 type 2 will make a good impression to that particular prospect of you because here you actually provide the effectiveness of the controls that are in place okay in the upcoming videos now we will understand more who performs the soc 2 compliance what do you mean by soc 2 compliance exactly what are the requirements of soc 2 compliance more about type 1 type 2 what exactly soc 2 soc 2 report what is a soc 2 report how it looks like and why being soc 2 is more important what is soc 2 certification process exactly what it entails gap assessment scope finalization policy updates everything is being discussed friends this is just a starting point i will make this a very long series because i want all of you to get the value out of it i don't want this to be just a video i want you to get most value out of it and i want you to now understand soc 2 in depth so that when you go for an interview and people actually comment to my channel a lot of these days now and they are getting jobs because of these videos so yes i want you to go out for interviews and watch these videos and answer the questions that are being provided by the uh, interviewers so that you can answer them without answering without uh, understanding these concepts you won't be able to uh, answer the questions in the interviews okay no matter how many certifications you get in the security domain so make sure you understand this these videos are for you please watch carefully and as always please watch carefully and comment in the comment section so that i can answer them if you have any questions and please like and subscribe and share these videos so that i can get motivated and i can create this series as i wanted to create it so who does soc 2 compliance apply to who can perform this soc 2 audit what are the advantages of soc 2 certification difference between soc 1 soc 2 soc 3 very important okay difference between soc 2 type 1 and soc 2 type 2 already being discussed here again a good chart for referencing them again in depth the services criteria what is the penalty of non compliance with soc 2 again somebody can ask you in the interview okay how often does a soc 2 compliance audit need to be performed again somebody can ask you why is it challenging what are the potential pitfalls in a previous video i have created i have discussed in depth the, the grc pitfalls If you have not watched this video, I highly recommend you to watch the GRC video. There is a video that I have created yesterday, GRC workshop video, 
प्लीज वॉच इट फ्रेंड्स इफ यू आर इन द जी आर सी डोमेन गवर्नेंस रिस्क एंड कंप्लायंस एंड इफ यू मिस दैट वीडियो आई कैन अशो यू दैट यू आर मिसिंग अ लॉट ओके एंड इट विल इम्पैक्ट यू इफ यू डू नॉट वॉच दैट वीडियो प्लीज वॉच दैट वीडियो माई फ्रेंड्स एंड दिस इज वॉट वी हैव इन दिस वीडियो एज ऑलवेज आई विल हैव मोर दिस इज पार्ट थ्री पार्ट फोर विल बी कमिंग वेरी सुन मे बी टूमोरो सो प्लीज लाइक द वीडियो सो दैट आई कैन गेट मोटिवेटेड एंड आई कीप ऑन क्रिएटिंग दिस स्टफ फॉर यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग टेक केयर बाय